Today is June 28, 2011. For some reason, most of the month, my mind kept wanting to jump ahead to July. And so I know July is going to be big uh, in terms of changes in our world. This is an absolute. You can count on it. So, it's important that we all get ready for the changes. I, um, I am a trans channeler, and I have channeled uh, Yasi, who is a nickname for Jesus, many times. And so, I will honor that, which is to come. I will allow my consciousness to be taken over. So I ask you to bear with me as my body goes through some changes. It, it is something that has taken me a long time to get comfortable with more and more to allow Jesus to use my consciousness, my body, to speak through and to, uh, to with honor, uh, give him that opportunity. Because for a while it felt strange and I didn't feel worthy and I felt, uh, you know, that he should have picked someone else. Uh, but anytime I have ever asked him what my credibility is for this. He tells me the same thing over and over again. And that is your life is all the credibility that you need. There were no judgments in that in those words. There was just nothing but pure love and acceptance. And through this complete, unconditional love and acceptance by Yasi, uh, my life has been transformed. Because I would have least chosen me of all people. To have this honor. And so it is. <sighs> yes, it is I again. I like this place. And this is where this one sleeps, correct? It is vibrant. It is attractive. I like this, yes. I have to remember that when I am occupying Dianya's physical and mental space that I have to uh, be aware of how some of the things that I may do will affect her after I leave. And so for this reason, this, um, this beverage that is so popular in your culture, coffee, I have begun to like it very much. I can drink it. I can drink many, many, many cups. But the effect that it has had upon this woman, Dianya, has um, not been good. So I have to honor that. These are things that I've had to learn when I use these human vessels. What indeed would I say to you all? What indeed would I say to you all? I have talked recently about the five days of darkness. 
I've talked about the earth upheavals. I told you then that there would be so much more. I told you then to start preparing. And I'm telling you, once again, one would have to have a head made of a block of wood not to see what's going on. Do not bury yourselves in the sand. Do not be like the prairie dog that pokes its little head up and out of the hole every now and then and comes just a little bitty ways from where it lives and then it looks around and runs back into the hole. It sees danger everywhere. Don't want you to be like that. It will serve no purpose. I am going to pronounce it thus, that it would be a wise choice to start amassing some things that you will need for four to six months. There's no longer just five days. It has moved ahead. So now, listen to me and listen to me carefully. Some of these things are being said all over the world now. There are many people that are uh, shouting out the clarion's call to be prepared. And I am telling you to listen to them. There will be many of you who will perish. And maybe you will choose this time to make your transition. Certainly if you're tired of living this life, that would probably be a wise choice. Because you will not be strong enough to go through the changes. The first thing that I would tell you that is the most important that you must prepare for is water. Water. Get those chemicals and those filters and those things that you will need to purify your drinking source. There's only so much water that you can store and after a while you will need to use groundwater and other sources. And the water that falls out of the sky will not be that safe. You will still need to purify it. There are so many ways that I, I choose not to go into it except to tell you to do your own due diligence in how this is done. It is everywhere. The information that you need is everywhere. And it can be done relatively inexpensive, I think the word is, with lower costs to you. And I tell you, that it is okay to share with your neighbor what you're doing and why, but do not shout it from the rooftops. Do not get a soapbox and shout it out by a megaphone. Do not do this. Just go on about your business, go on about your day, and tell them why you're doing what you're doing. There are two reasons for this. The first is, you do not want to draw that much attention to yourself. I'm giving you basic survival tips here, and this one is very important. Do not go out there telling the world that you have a basement full of dry goods and that you have this and you have that and you have the other. Because they will remember when the time comes. And you may not be able to keep what it is you need to survive for very long. If you share anything of what you have, it must be very quiet. 
I know that you have been taught to love your neighbor as yourself, but this is going to be some very hard times for a lot of people. I think you understand what I'm trying to tell you, don't you? There's nothing wrong with being prepared. Is that not one of your organization's motto? Be prepared. Do you think I just walked down into the desert with nothing on but the robes over my shoulders? No. We had water skins and dates and nuts and uh, just all different kinds of things that were prepared for us to take with us. We never left anywhere empty-handed. People were very generous and loving and kind. And people were beginning to see that they were not meant to be slaves of any kind. Physical slaves, mental slaves, emotional slaves. They were beginning in that time for the very first time to understand about their divinity. That was a threat of the worst kind and still is a threat of the worst kind to anyone that wishes to take away your power. They don't want you to feel and know your own power.